just want to welcome you to this series now that we're doing, this mini-series on the culture of life versus the culture of death. And uh, we're reviewing this document, Humanae Vitae and Human Life, with Father Frank Bavone, who is a founding director of Priests for Life. Father, as we get into Section 19, what, what do you want to share with us here? Section 19 opens up uh, the third major uh, section of the encyclical. It's called Pastoral Directives. But mm -hmm. essentially what the Pope is doing, he's saying, look, We've laid out the teaching here, okay? Right. We've told you that it's not our teaching, it's God's plan. And we know that it's difficult. And we can't change it. And the we church can't, can't change, change it. it, right? And so now, in this third part of the encyclical, the Pope says, but you know what? As difficult as it is, you can do it. Mm -hmm. And he wants to instill a tremendous hope in the people of God. And he starts off by saying that the church is mater et magistra. And those who know Latin will recognize that as meaning mother as well as teacher. Mm -hmm. Not just standing up and saying, birth control is wrong, don't do it. Abortion is wrong, don't do it. That's only part of the reality. The church stands up and reaches out her hand and says, mm -hmm. take my hand. I'm going to give you the strength to do what's right. I'm not just going to tell you to do what's right and then watch you struggle. I'm going to lift out my hand. I'm going to give you the strength to do what's right. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you fall and do what's wrong, I'm going to lift out my hand then too. Mm -hmm. And when you repent of your sins, I'm going to lift you up. So the, the, the Pope gives a beautiful exhortation here to people who have fallen in these areas, mm -hmm. people who, like we've discussed, have, have been sterilized, have had abortions, have used contraception. The church's word is meant to bring about repentance, mm -hmm. a, a turning, recognizing, metanoia, changing of the mind. I thought this was right, now I realize it's wrong. Then what? Hopelessness? Despair? No. Mm -hmm. Hope, repentance, and new life. Uh, the Pope says here, right. Our words would not be an adequate expression of the thought and solicitude of the church, mother and teacher of all peoples, if after having recalled men to the observance and respect of the divine law regarding matrimony, we did not strengthen them in the path of honest regulation of birth, even amid the difficult conditions which today afflict families and peoples. Mm -hmm. The church, in fact, cannot have a different conduct towards men than that of the Redeemer. She knows their weaknesses, has compassion on the crowd, receives sinners, but she cannot renounce the teaching of the law, which is in reality that law proper to a human life, restored to its original truth and conducted by the Spirit of God. You know what I often say in my preaching is, brothers and sisters, if you understand the church's teaching and the gospel, you ought to come to the conclusion that, hey, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. And that's where God wants us to be because if we think to ourselves it's impossible, then we start, have to start to think, well, then where do I get the strength to do it? If you're, if you're saying I have to do it this way, where do I find the strength? Mm -hmm. And that's where the fullness of the teaching of the church comes in, that you and I do not rely just on human power. Mm -hmm. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Our baptism, our confirmation, a word yes. which means strengthening, and the sacramental grace of marriage, as well as the ongoing sacramental grace that we receive by sacrament of penance mm -hmm. and by, of course, above all, the Holy Eucharist. Because the Pope, you know, you were on the Pontifical Council for the Family, yes. and, and the Holy Father in, 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 in uh, Humanae Vitae talked about the Eucharist as the strength to hold marriages together. Uh, you know, they have a Eucharistic life, and what, and and, and we're not going to draw the power from the Eucharist unless we make good confessions. Right. And we won't make good confessions unless we have a formed conscience. Right. So we got to learn what the Church is teaching, exactly. and this is happiness, and we get the grace to to live it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, in John chapter ten, Jesus said, "No one takes my life from me. Mm -hmm. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again." Now, what's interesting to me about that verse is we can understand the power to take it up again, the power of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. But power to lay it down? Mm. What, what kind of power is that? It's the power to love. Mm -hmm. The power to love so much that you'll give your own life away. That's what this is all about. Right. We, have give, we are given in the Eucharist. We are given when we live a life of prayer, an intense life of union with God, we are given a superhuman power. Right. We can begin to live, love as God loves. It's the Holy Spirit loving through us, just as Paul says, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit prays through us. He loves through us, too. Because the next section talks about grace, you know. And, yes. And, and that's, uh, what, what is grace? I mean, maybe you can give us a good definition. Yes. Uh, 
there are two basic meanings. One uh-huh. is God himself is grace, uncreated grace, as mm-hmm. we say. And God lives in us uh, by our baptism. Uncreated grace is God himself, the life of God in us. Created grace is the little helps that God gives us along the way. He gives mm-hmm. us a little, he, he lifts Those us actual up. actual graces. He, huh? The That's actual right, graces. Right. You know, sometimes people say, oh, Jesus, help me to do this. As if we're doing something and Jesus kind of comes along and gives us a little push. Yeah. No, no. We wouldn't even be able to start doing it. Mm-hmm. if Jesus weren't already there giving us the grace to do so. So mm-hmm. grace, you can think of it as your, the very lifeblood mm-hmm. of your ability to do what's right. So every time we're good, and well, first of all, when we're in the state of grace, and every time we're good, either receive the sacraments or pray or do a virtuous act, mm-hmm. we sanctifying grace increases in us. It so increases. God's presence. That's God's presence increasing us. Right. So Hail Mary full of grace is Hail Mary full of God. Exactly. That's really what we're saying. Exactly. Uh, and and uh, so we become more God-like the more, uh, more sanctifying grace that we, we grow in. That's right. And the sacraments are the most powerful way to grow in those graces if we do God's will. You know. and, and the other thing that helps us to grow in this is, of course, as you've often discussed, the love, the communion of love that is in the family, especially mm-hmm. when there are many children. Yeah. That itself strengthens us in the life of grace because we're constantly giving ourselves to one another or at mm-hmm. least striving to do so. And if we fail, we, we, we go back to God and you know, we pray together as a family mm-hmm. and say, okay, Lord, we're doing our best. Please, uh, we want to grow in your grace. Make this possible for us. Um, so beautiful how, how, how the Pope well, lays out this. Yeah, providence works so much. I mean, you, you providentially, how your life has unfolded. I mean, God drew you uh, to Rome for a period of time, and mm, you were on the Pontifical mm. Council for the family, and now yes. priest for life, and your work in the parish. But uh, how providence has worked through your life, yes. and yes. I, I am sure that ex- that time in Rome was invaluable because you learned so much being around the Pope. There, oh, absolutely! You know, absolutely. and uh, on his Pontifical Council, and Gwen and I were invited to be one of the twenty couples on the Pontifical Council, and and uh, but we never thought that. Uh, we would represent the theme for the jubilee of bishop, or jubilee of families in year 2000. And a year early, it's funny because we had nine grandchildren in '99, and uh, it wasn't planned that way. But nine, <laughs> nine grandchildren in '99, but it worked out to be the perfect age when they went to Rome in year 2000. Because if they were two years old, you couldn't have controlled them. Right. And we brought uh, half of the children where there was some 30 some kids. Um, but nine little infants, and it looked, uh, and, and they represented the theme: children, springtime of hope for family and society. Right. So it is uh, providence works, you know, and it, we just don't. If we, for Gwen to, if it was a year later, Gwen wouldn't have been able to go to Rome. She would have been too sick. Yes. And uh, but she was there representing motherhood, uh, and for this whole theme. And the service know. that Gwen has rendered to the church, a service that you uh, have and continue to render. Uh, is actually mentioned by the Pope in, in this encyclical in, in, the, in the sense that he calls mm-hmm. upon Christian husbands and wives and he calls upon families to strengthen one another. Um, he says, for example, in section 26, it is married couples themselves who become apostles and guides to other married couples. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is assuredly among so many forms of apostolate one of those which seem most opportune today. Right. And providentially, God has allowed Family you to be so yeah. much a part of that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's it's. Uh, I, I thank God every day. I was married to Gwen and her husband uh, for 43 years, and before she died, and our, our anniversary was just in August 15th. Mm-hmm. So uh, she almost made it to our anniversary, and uh, two yeah. months later, you know, she died two months before. But I think she's going to be held up as a model for moms and grandmothers because she. Uh, she just loved motherhood, and she was open to life, and and went through all these risks of dying, right. and wouldn't think of aborting, but she gi- died a most joyful death with all of her children around her, and that she can't ask for any more. Oh. She had the sacrament, and uh, so Father, we just want to thank you for walking the walk with My the church, pleasure. and thank uh, you. you've been uh, a real uh, vanguard out there for life. And uh, this is the issue, and we've we've got to be pro-life. Because otherwise we're going, Mother, you were there, Mother Teresa said, we're going to see a holocaust in the world. That's right. Destruction of the world unless we stop abortion. And Holy Father said, this is not an option. We must stop it. So, uh, and it's not even on the radar screen right now, Mm -hmm. you know, and we've got to, uh, and there's ways of doing it. And we're uh, showing you the way. It's God's way, not our way. And we're going to cut away to this uh, 
program and actually in Rome with Gwen and the Pontifical Council for the family. But it was a spring. It was actually in October, year 2000, the Jubilee of Families, when the Holy Father called families from all over the world. But uh, Gwen was there representing the theme, and you're now listen to our family and see the Holy Father. We'll be right back. <laughs> 